this is the main unlock that friend tech has really shown us. Users should be able to sign up and log into crypto apps in ways that are familiar to them and should be onboarded into the more decentralized side of crypto over time. And by using a simple JavaScript library, you can easily bake in the very same onboarding experience and app specific wallet setup that friend tech has used into your own apps. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that. This is Privy and it's the onboarding and authorization service provider that powers friend tech. Now it has traditional wallets like MetaMask, Coinbase wallet, or anything that you can connect to with Wallet Connect. But the uh, really interesting thing here is that they have another side of things that allows people to log in with their email or social profiles and create app specific embedded wallets that they can use within the application. You can log in with your email, your phone number, your Google account, Discord, GitHub, or your Apple ID. And once you do, a wallet it can be created for you just based off of that. Once you make your account, your private key is sort of split up into multiple pieces. One part of it is stored on the device that you create uh, the, the wallet on, but uh, also Privy stores some parts of that private key as well to make it easy for you to sort of log in and use this wallet. We'll talk briefly about some of the security trade-offs later, but one impactful element of all of this is that whenever the user wants to, they can export the private keys of the wallet that were was created on your application using Privy and take that private key and plug it into a different wallet provider so they can take the private key from their Privy embedded wallet and set it up with MetaMask or Rainbow or any other type of wallet. From there, the user can use this embedded wallet for any other type of application that you can uh, use an Ethereum wallet address for. Now this lets the user slowly learn about private key management um, by transacting on chain, starting with easy to use and low cost transactions or low value. But enough about the what, let me show you the how, how you can set this up for yourself in whatever application you're building. You can use Preview with any application that's built within the React framework, and this includes Next.js, which is my personal favorite favorite, and it's what I'm going to be showing you today, though it's pretty similar for React, and you can check out Privy's docs for the specifics on how to get it set up with a, just a normal React and not Next.js. To make things clear, I made this simple app called Baseball. The pun is definitely intended because the game runs on Coinbase's Layer 2, which is called Base. It's a simple game of catch where a smart contract tracks which person has the ball, and whichever person has the ball has the ability to send the ball to a different wallet address. I already have two accounts that are set up with Privy, so I'm gonna show you what this app looks like, the flow, but don't worry, we're gonna backtrack and show you all of the elements of it and how you can implement it in your own application. You can click this login button and that will bring up a Privy modal or a pop-up where you can log in. Now I'm gonna log in here with a pre-existing Google account that I've already signed up for Privy with. I'll log in here with my email address, uh, my Google account, and it will take me back here and then it will log me into the application. And I've already created an app-specific embedded wallet so it takes me to this dashboard page where I can see uh, which wallet address currently has the ball and I can see what my wallet address is, my embedded or app specific wallet here, as well as the balance of how much ETH I have on that wallet. Now I've just quickly logged out of that account and logged into the other one, the one that actually has the ball right now and you can see how the user interface changes. It says you have the ball and you can throw it to somebody and you can enter a wallet address here and then call the contract to throw the ball to that wallet address. So the first step is bringing Privy's onboarding and embedded wallets into your app. And the way that you do this is by installing Privy's library. Let me show you. In your terminal, you're gonna to wanna to navigate to the root directory of the project uh, before you install anything. So I'm going to CD into baseball test. And now that we're here, we can actually install the Privy JavaScript library. I'm gonna copy and paste this in. It's npm install at privy.io slash react auth. Now I've already got this installed in my uh, in my application, so I'm not gonna click enter here, but you can hit enter and then it'll install the privy package. Now, once it's installed, you have to wrap your application with something called the Privy Provider so that you can access all of the functions and the data that Privy gives you from anywhere inside of your application. When you're building a, a Next.js app, you can do so inside of the underscore app.js file. That's what I have open here. You'll have to import the Privy provider from the uh, Privy package. And once you've imported that provider, you can sort of wrap this, uh, your components that uh, the sort of the page props for your application, all the individual pages um, with this Privy provider. And that's going to uh, give your application all of the Privy related information that it needs wherever you are in the application. You can see I've got some configuration going on here for the Privy provider, but the only one you really need to worry about is the app ID. This is what's gonna connect your 
application to your Privy account so that you can actually create these embedded wallets for your users and just manage the all of the uh, functionality that Privy gives you. This app ID is kind of like an API key or something like that where it actually allows you to talk to Privy and you have to get that from Privy's website and I've stored it here in an environment variable. Um, but let me show you how you can get this API key. You'll have to go to Privy's website, that's privy.io, and right now this actually isn't open for everyone immediately, but they will pretty quickly give you access if you go through this get access process. They just want to help onboard new users into Privy, but you can sort of request access here if you're thinking of building an application like this. Once you've got access to Privy, you'll get to this dashboard and you can navigate to this API keys section to get your specific app ID that you can sort of plug into that configuration uh, of the Privy provider. Now you'll see in this app.js file that I've also got some other stuff going on here. We've got a Privy Wagme connector. They actually have a pretty slick integration of Wagme hooks, if you're familiar with those. Um, that, that's something maybe we'll get into in another video, um, but it's super helpful for actually being able to um, call functions on contracts. I also like to use Chakra UI to build my UIs because, well, I'm lazy, <laughs> but if you want to use a different UI library or a different CSS library, you can use whatever you want to to build out your application. Um, I just like using Chakra for whatever reason. So now what we want to do is build our login screen, right? And uh, an ability for people to log in either with their uh, standard wallets or to sign up with this embedded wallet with their email or socials. Now the default page for a next application is the index file. So we're gonna build our login screen here. So let's navigate to our index file and you can see I have a bunch of stuff already sort of pre-written here, but I'll explain what's going on. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to get familiar with when using Privy is importing the use Privy hook. You can see me doing that right here. Um, this is a React hook that actually allows you to access all of the pre-built functionality that Privy has to offer. Now, one of those pre-built functions is called login and we can get that by using the use Privy hook and sort of just grabbing this login function. I'm destructuring it here to sort of grab out that login function. You'll see I've got some other variables in here from this hook, but we'll talk about those in a minute. Now, whenever we call this login function, that's what's gonna bring up that pop-up, bring up that modal that actually lets us go through that login flow. Um, so we can call that anywhere in our application, but for my application, as you saw, I sort of put that on a button here. So I created the button uh, down here and I made the on click, the thing that happens when you click on the button, that login function that the use privy hook gave us. So when I click this button, it'll bring up that pop-up uh, given to us by Privy, and that's where your user can log in. Now, once I go through this login process, one unique thing about Privy is that it will actually log all of this information on your Privy dashboard. In the same dashboard where you get your API key, you can actually go to a users tab and see anyone that's sort of logged into your application. You can see the ID that Privy uses to identify them on their end, as well as the different sources that they've sort of linked or connected to their Privy profile, whether that's like a Google account or an email or a phone number, it shows you all of the information here. And when I go through this log login process, we should see a new user on this page. So I'm gonna log in with a different Google account, one that I haven't used already, but you can use whatever sort of login you want to here. I'll go to Google and I'll, I'll sign in with this, this address. Um, and once it goes through that flow, I've successfully connected with Google and you'll see I get sent to this create your baseball wallet ad address. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but the uh, interesting thing here is that if things worked out correctly, I'll switch to this other user management page. We should, when I refresh, oh, I didn't even need to refresh it. We can see that new email address, hockeypeoplevideos at gmail.com um, is now uh, logged into Privy. So once I went through that login flow, it, my application automatically pushed me to this next step, which is where we can create that embedded wallet. But how did it know to push me here? Um, well, it has to do with those other, um, those other um, uh, variables that I got from that use privy hook. You'll remember that we got the login function from the use privy hook, but we also got ready and authenticated. These are two other variables that will change based on the status of um, the user um, in, your, in your application. So if they've gone through the whole authentication pro process and have logged in, well then this authenticated variable will then turn to true. And using that, we can actually tell our application to do different things. Um, I, I would like to send us to different pages. I'm using the next router or the user 
router hook from Next. We're not going to go into exactly how that works, um, but down here you can see that I've got a sort of like a, a statement that says, okay, if we are ready and if we're authenticated, um, actually maybe we'll look at this one, if we're ready and we're authenticated, uh, push us to this create wallet page, um, which is a different page here in my pages directory um, in my uh, sort of a file directory here. Um, so one thing that is in here is the embedded wallet side of things. We'll talk about that in a minute, but essentially it's saying, okay, if the user doesn't have an embedded wallet yet, take them to the create wallet page. And if they already have an embedded wallet for, for that login, we're gonna just send them to the dashboard, which is something we'll talk about in a minute. So because that authenticated variable turned true, my application knew to send me to this uh, create wallet page. Uh, let's talk about exactly how this works because once we click give me my wallet, it's gonna create an embedded wallet for us that's tied to our social account that we logged in with that we can then use to transact within the app. So here we are on the create wallet page of the application and just like on the uh, the main page of the application or the this landing page of it, we're going to import use privy so that we can use more privy functionality. Um, he, just like we uh, got that login function from use privy, here we're going to get a different function called create wallet from the use privy hook. Just like with the login function, when you call this create wallet function, either uh, through a, a button click, which is what I have it doing, or for, through some other method, it'll create that wallet. And the interesting thing is it will actually um, log that information on the Privy dashboard that we were looking at previously. You can see that for the user we just created, there's no embedded wallet yet. But for these users that I've already pre-made, we have embedded wallets here. And um, if this is your Privy dashboard, then you can sort of click on that and you can see uh, all the information about that, uh, that user and what the wallet address is for their embedded or app specific wallet. Once we call that create wallet function for this user from our application, we're gonna see just like these ones, a wallet address pop up here, and then um, we're gonna be able to have that user use that wallet to do whatever we want them to do on the app. So I'll show you what this wallet creation process looks like. It's super simple, and once I'm through it, my application is gonna push me to the main dashboard of the uh, of the application, but we'll, I'll show you how it works. We click give me my wallet, it goes to this loading page, and then all of a sudden the wallet is created, and it's gonna take me to this uh, dashboard, which is the main page of the uh, baseball game that I've made here. And the application knew to send me here because of a similar way that it knew to send me from the index page or the, the landing page to the create wallet page. It check to see, okay, does this person have a wallet already? If they already have a wallet, send them to the dashboard. They don't need to create a new embedded wallet. There's no variable in the use privy hook this time that checks, oh, do you have an embedded wallet? So we have to import something a little bit different from the privy package, which is use wallets. And from use wallets, we can grab this wallets variable, which includes an array of all of the different wallets that that user has connected. From there, we can create an embedded wallet variable, which uses this function that's attached to the wallets uh, object here, wallets.find, and we check to see if there is a wallet of the type privy, which is the embedded wallet, uh, inside of that array of wallets. Now, if there is one, then that embedded wallet variable is gonna be true, and using that logic, we can check, okay, if there is an embedded wallet, we're gonna push you to dashboard, and um, just similarly, if we're not authenticated yet using that uh, same variable from the previous step, we're going to send them back to that main page where they have to log in and go through that authentication process again. So because now we have an embedded wallet for this account, it pushes us to the dashboard and we can see a whole bunch of information about the game, um, what wallet address currently has the ball. We can see the address of our embedded wallet as well as the ETH balance of that wallet on the uh, base layer too. And this wallet address is actually one of my other accounts. So let's log into that account instead so we can sort of talk about how you can actually send the ball or call a transaction or call, call a function on a, uh, on a smart contract. So I've logged into that other account here and you can see, okay, it recognizes I have the ball and it renders this sort of user interface because I have the ball and I can uh, enter a wallet address here. And uh, using some of the uh, the wag me hooks integration, um, it makes it so that when you click this button, it's actually going to bring up a sort of transaction page where you can review whether or not you want to sort of send this transaction. Uh, we're not gonna get into the details of the contract I wrote for this uh, or how, to, how I use the wag me integration to call the functions of that contract. But if you're familiar with wag me hooks, it, it shouldn't be too hard to follow along with Privy's docs to get this set up for yourself. 
But the other interesting element of Privy is the ability for the user to export their embedded or app-specific wallet um, that they created using your app um, so that they can use it in other places. Uh, I'll show you what that flow looks like. You can export your wallet, and when you click this button, we've got a, a sort of transfer here, and you can copy your private keys and then import them into a different wallet provider like MetaMask or any other number of uh, wallet providers that allow you to sort of import private keys. Now, keep in mind, all of this should be considered a very hot wallet, meaning that there are a number of different ways that your wallet could become compromised since you're handling and storing private keys digitally rather than writing them down as a seed phrase or storing them on a hardware wallet. Um, so make sure you only have an amount of funds in these types of wallets that you would be okay losing. And we get this export wallet button working in the very same way that we got a lot of these other wallet uh, button or all of these other uh, sort of buttons working. And that's by importing using the use privy hook, a function that'll bring up this is uh, modal. Just like before, we use the use privy hook to grab this function that's called export wallet, and we tie it to a buttons on click. And then whenever we uh, click on that button, it brings up that modal that's provided to us very simply by privy. And there you have it. We've easily created an onboarding flow that can bring in existing wallet holders and people that are totally new to crypto at the very same time. Now in reading up on privy, it's clear that they're of the opinion that gradual onboarding is the way to go rather than immediately bombard bombarding new users with with all of this complexity of private key management. Then as they transact on chain more uh, and um, sort of get more familiar with the ecosystem, the idea is that they get a better handle on the security sacrifices that they're making by using an embedded or a hot wallet and learn more about hardware wallets and private key management. Overall, I think this is a great way to onboard new users, no matter where they are on that curve. And Privy is definitely a very good tool to use to do it. And I'm curious what you think about it. Uh, let me know what you think. You can reply to this video and um, let me know what you think of Privy. Uh, I've definitely sort of seen the, the, the friend tech sort of phenomenon take off. I think that that's leading a lot more people to say, hey, what is this whole embedded wallet thing? What is this app specific wallet thing? So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you next time.